Goalkeepers are unfortunately often underrated. Maybe it's because it seems superior to score a goal than to save one. They never win the Ballon d'Or, except for one exception. They are rarely recognized for being the best player of a side. But in my humble opinion, they are the key to a team's success. Just quickly picture in your mind what your club's game day would look like without a goalkeeper. Imagine PSG without Navis, or Manchester United without De Gea. Well, it certainly wouldn't look nice. Now, some keepers are just okay, but others are legendary, like you watch them save shots, and you can't believe how Ibadi can even do that. One of those goalkeepers is none other than Lev Yashin. Considered by many the greatest keeper of all time, I knew I had to make a video on him. So today, we'll be taking a look at just how good was Lev Yashin really, and what was his story. Yo guys, welcome back to The Football Factor, it's great to have you, and if you enjoy these videos, consider lightly tapping the like button and subscribing to the channel, it's absolutely free and you can always change your mind. But of course, it's totally up to you, so no pressure. Before we get into his career, if you haven't heard of Lev Yashin before, let's just make things clear, he was an absolute legend. Lev Yashin holds the world record for most penalty saves, having saved over 150 of them. He has kept around 275 clean sheets for club and country. He's a 5-time Soviet top league champion, the official best goalkeeper of the 20th century, and most importantly, he's the only goalkeeper to ever win the Ballon d'Or. Yes, you heard me right, a goalkeeper winning the Ballon d'Or. He has to be something special, well, you'd be right. Now what's truly interesting, but sad, is that until the rise of the internet, no one ever really recognized Lev Yashin for his game. And the reason that is, is because Yashin played his entire career in Russia, which back then was known as the Soviet Union with a club named Dynamo Moscow. And he played during a period of dictatorship in the country, meaning that it was much harder to get a ticket to his game. So for many, he didn't even exist until the rise of the internet when you could look him up online. It's genuinely sad to see a great player only be recognized so greatly already after his death. But I guess it was the hard reality of living in the Soviet Union at the time. But on top of all that, back in his day, especially in the Soviet Union, cameras only recorded some of the games, which means we only know a small portion of his ability. But in this video, I will give you everything we can possibly know. Lev Yashin was born on October 22nd, 1929 in Moscow, Russia, and went through a terribly difficult childhood during World War II. Already at the early age of 12, before he even touched football, he was forced to work in a factory to support the war effort. He worked there for 6 years, until at the age of 18 he suffered a nervous breakdown, meaning he had to stop working there, and was sent to work in a military factory in Moscow, where the conditions were supposedly better. And this was where his physical health improved, and he started playing football. The factory had a football team, which he joined, and right then and there, he was spotted and invited to join the Dynamo Moscow youth team. And for the rest of his career, he played for that same club. Now, something interesting about this man was that for the first four years of him playing for Dynamo Moscow, Lev Yashin was also playing ice hockey, until in 1954, he decided to give up hockey to focus on football. And throughout the years, he continued practicing football and becoming better and better, until his professional debut. Lev Yashin's professional debut for Dynamo Moscow was in 1950, which was still while he was playing ice hockey. Yashin's career lasted for 21 years, from 1950 to 1971. And during his time with the Soviet club, they won 5 league titles and 3 cups. It was also where he got several famous nicknames, like Black Panther, Black Spider, and Black Octopus. Apart from his incredible success with his club, his national success was even bigger. 
He was first invited to join the national team in 1954 and led them to victories in the 1956 Summer Olympics and the 1960 European Championship, and he helped his team reach fourth place in the 1966 World Cup. Now his best and most memorable game was the 1963 England vs the rest of the world football match. This was a game where he made the most spectacular saves that were ever caught on camera. This match truly cemented his position as one of the best goalkeepers in international history of the game. And that same year, he was honored with the Ballon d'Or, becoming the only goalkeeper to ever receive the award. You see, that's all we really know about his career, and again, it's truly sad that he was so not recognized just because he lived in the Soviet Union under a dictatorship. If we look at careers of other players during his generation, like Pele, Alfredo De Stefano, Dennis Law, Johan Cruyff, and so on, we know so much more about them, it's truly mind-boggling. So all of his achievements that we know of, and all of the footage we can see of him, is in reality only a fraction of what his real potential was. Yashin's story was definitely very different from the average footballer who spent his childhood playing football, while Yashin worked in a factory. But despite all of the hardships that he went through during a war, he became arguably the greatest goalkeeper of all time. However, as good as he was in my opinion, there is quite a lot of controversy on whether or not he was really that good, and many even think he was very overrated. And while we're on the topic of overrated players, I have a pretty interesting video about why I personally believe Zinedine Zidane as a player was overrated. So feel free to check out that video you see on screen, and I will catch you in the next one.